was really hard. Didn't really see my dad, so it was hard coping with only one parent and not both of them. I, uh, when I started growing up, me and my mum didn't really get along. There was, every time we were in the same room, it would cause an argument. Our relationship didn't really end up well. We ended up breaking a couple of times and I just found it rough at home with everything. Some of the time, I, yeah, it was a bit hard jumping primary school to primary school. Went through three of them in my life and as soon as I thought I got settled in, it, I just moved and I didn't really feel settled and I didn't really work well with change either. Primary school, there was a physical, like I got hit and everything in um, secondary school. Um, and then in a bit of a college, it was verbal abuse, which didn't make me feel comfortable coming into school or anything like that. Year 11, I got to that age where I just wanted to go out with my mates and be like a normal teenager would be. But mum being parents, she wanted me to sit down and revise on college, like schoolwork. But I didn't really want to, like every day. Like it was hard enough doing six hours at school revising and then doing more when I got straight through that front door. So I found it really hard and the more me and mum argued, the more I'd be behind on my work. So I'd get to college by God knows what time in the morning. Like just like, as soon as the gates open, so at eight o'clock, revising through my morning before I went into tutor and then also in tutor. And then some lessons I'd sit there and revise and do the subjects I need to catch up on as well as doing the call it the work as well that the teacher was setting us. So I had um, quite a bit to catch up on. At school I was quiet. I wouldn't really say anything about what was going on at home because it wasn't really their place. I know it was their place to know, but at the same time, like I didn't know like what was gonna happen, like if I told them that me and mum weren't getting along, like I don't know what would have happened there and then. With me not really Doing much in class, mum would get a phone call off the school saying I wasn't really doing work and then that would go into an argument as well because I'm not focusing in school because I'd either be worried about oh, if I didn't do this right in school or I didn't do like this before I went to school at home, would mum have a go at me as soon as I walked in? Like I'd have that feeling like all day like I wouldn't know if mum's going to have a go at me or not every now and then, trying to do my best to be there for her as well was do what's best for me, found it hard. I had been introduced to me by college, which was really helpful. Um, college got concerned because I wouldn't, i turn up to college late because there was just one time when I had to walk from Biddeford straight through to Barnstable because my mum wouldn't give, like, she wouldn't, well, she would give me the bus fare, but I didn't realise she had it on her, so she, like, wouldn't give it to me unless I did something for her. But I knew I'd be late for college that way, so I thought, oh, I'll get to college quicker that way, and I didn't, I was late. And then college got concerned, so they contacted Ben, and me and Ben sat there and spoke about stuff that was going on at home. Ben was also, like, when, the more time I was talking to Ben, I knew that he'd sit there and he'd be listening to what I had to say, and he made me feel like I could sit there no matter what state I was in, I was able to sit there and talk to him about what was going on at home and how stuff was with us. And he'd ask how college was doing for me as well. Talking about either how my week's been, depending on how long I haven't seen him for. Um, we talk about, like, he crushed me, like, oh, how's you and mum doing? Or how's home? And everything like that. And I'd turn around and go, yeah, it's great, or no, it's not great, me and mum's had another argument again, or I'd be able to open up to someone that wouldn't sit there. Because most of the time I'd feel like I'd be sat there and i feel like someone was judging me, but I knew with Ben, he'd sit there and he'd listen to everything I said, and he'd take everything in and he wouldn't sit there and go, oh, no, this is wrong. Like, he'd properly listen and he'd know where I'd be getting at as well, so. I tried explaining to mum, but mum was more concerned about my education than anything else, so I had to keep going in. I'd understand like, where she'd be getting at, because she'd be her mum at the end of the day, like she'd be doing what any parent would do. But she'd always been on my case, like, 
I'd also have to do housework as well, like help her out, run the house for it. And there'll be some times where I feel like I'm doing everything because the boys have gone out with their mates and I'm sat there doing stuff. So I'd nicely say a word to mum, but mum wouldn't see it as me seeing it nicely. She'd think I'd be snapping. So she snap at me and then I think one time I just snapped and told her exactly how I felt, which I do regret saying some of the stuff I said, but at the same time, I know it was the truth. Like I knew that she had to be able to hear what I had to say about it all as well. And I think it just got to the point where I didn't really want to be in the house much longer because I knew if I stayed there any longer, it wouldn't have ended well for any of us. We'd done some people arguing and then knowing that mum was pregnant as well, it would have put more stress on her. So I thought it was time for me to go. I thought I'd go for a walk to clear my head, but I knew she wanted to be at the house at the same time, so I did pack my bags then as well and walk on midnight or just before midnight. I tried getting hold of Ben, like thinking like Ben could help, but Ben, obviously with how late it was, I thought I'd still try anyway, but Ben wasn't available and, but I still thought I'd have the guts to try getting hold of someone even though they might not have been awake or anything, like at least I tried. And then this lady picked me up. She noticed me because I was scared. I had this bag on me. It was cold, it was raining, and I was crying because like, I thought I had nowhere to go. And um, she met me on the bridge. I didn't want to be there at the time, like I knew, like, it made me feel uncomfortable with. I'd known I was sat there in the police station, but I knew like I'd be safe as well. But like I knew like they'd take me back to mum, and then if I did go back to mum, it would cause another argument again. Like it didn't really help, but at the same time, it did. Like it got me out of the house as well, but I knew there'd be an argument every now and then with mum. So, working with Tash, I think to begin with, there was um, obviously. At Encompass, we work with lots of different young people with different issues. And I think the first thing with Tash was um, sort of noticing that there was a lot more than what she was presenting. So she was certainly, um, you know, she was saying she was struggling, but I think there was always more. And it was a process to work with her to give her a, a situation to feel comfortable enough to really open up um, and share what was going on for her. Um, and then you know, it was always a pleasure to see her and most of the time she was very upbeat and, and looking after herself. But I think there was, you know, gradually she was able to talk to me honestly about what was happening. Um, she was always very brave, um, which is highlighted is when, when she left home and was on the bridge on her own in the middle of the night, um, but was still able to reach out and accept support. Um, it was very, con it was consistent working with her. So, you know, we'd see each other on a weekly basis. Um, whether that was at the youth centre or at college, um, you know, we'd always have a long chat um, about things other than her housing situation. And she was also, um, you know, willing to to trust in, um, in people's decisions uh, because she was so vulnerable and so alone at that point. Um, and she worked really well with myself and Simon from um, Torridge Housing and Encompass. And then and more recently with Kay and, and Sophie, whilst being in the project. The main thing with her is how much she's grown during this two year journey. Um, you know, she has become really independent and mature um, and probably would admit herself at, at sort of 16 when we first met her, that was some of the things she was struggling with, um, independence. Um, I mean, she was taking a lot of responsibility at home that maybe she shouldn't have been at that age anyway, but it, it's the growth. She was maybe, you know, using that energy to look after others and now she's learned to look after herself. Um, you know pleasure to work with always and you know I wouldn't say that there wasn't worries at time at times but um yeah she was able to engage and attend appointments and be contactable and you know uh, flexible enough to to try new things that we were offering um and now has wholly accepted her place in our supported living project and is doing better and better there was this time where I turned around and I had a phone call or Ben messaged me saying that I had a interview 
here in Biddeford with Kay and Simon and I thought like my hope was back again like I realised like my hope hadn't gone it's just but I felt like nothing was happening but I knew that I was like stuff was happening I'm guessing Ben put his foot down and made it happen I felt like I'd be judged the moment I got walked through the door or no one would understand how it feels but that day I met really nice people and they do know how it's felt to be left alone and scared and I was happy there was people here that understood me for who I was and not a lot of my background but knew some of my background like what I'd been through and it helped and I started to feel a lot more comfortable and I wasn't scared and it helped a lot knowing that I was I had the support I needed. Living here has made me feel a lot like home like I know I had home with mum but here it's more quieter and I'm able to focus on more stuff I don't have the stress or as I would say mum breathing down my neck all the time and I'd be able to have that space and do what I can and at my own pace I wouldn't have people going on and on and on about doing this and that and this and that. I'd be able to work at my own speed and it would help a lot and then getting to know people. First couple of weeks it was hard, like I kept myself to myself for a while. Like not a lot though, but a bit and then when um I started to get to know them all a lot more. It made me feel like I wasn't alone, like I said. And when I got to know the people more and they got to know me, like I knew like it wasn't going to be as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like when I arrived, I thought, oh, everyone's going to hate me or I'm a new girl, it's going to be like, oh, no one's going to talk to me or anything like that. But I was wrong because the first moment I came through the doors, I knew what I had. I went into my room, sorted everything out with my auntie, said bye to my auntie, and then Kay, which was a support worker that works here, brought me in here and introduced me to a few people. And I felt a lot better knowing that, like, I thought the moment I walked through this door, I thought I'd be judged for who I was, but I wasn't. Like, yeah, I was shy because it's a new place and change doesn't work with me. Like, I get my head around change quite a bit, but I thought, or well, I knew the first couple of weeks, like, I'd adapted to it quicker than I did. Yeah, like, my grandparents, their family, but I didn't adapt to that as quickly as I did when I was here. Like, I found it hard to adapt there because granddad and everything going on with that but here I felt more used to the place and I was able to feel a lot like I was at home and there wasn't anyone there telling me what to do or how to feel or when I had to do this by this amount of time or anything like that, I felt like I was able to be my own person there and then. Yeah, it's quite nice actually watching someone and um, they kind of spread their wings a little bit and, and sort of blossom. And Tasha's got this amazing cheeky grin that we didn't used to see very often before. And now we see it quite often. Um, she's doing well at college. Um, she talks to us if she's got a problem, she'll phone us pretty much straight away. And I know that's something that takes time for people. So I've seen her confidence up. I've seen her ability to communicate and to socialise with other people really, really improve. Um, yeah, she's great. I guess it's seeing where my journey takes me and knowing that I'm still going to have the support from Ben and Sophie there if I need them. And I'm guessing the next step would be getting a place get my own place and finding a job and being the person I want to be and have been from the start. Like I've always wanted to be that independent woman that's managed to get to her own steps, but 
there's nothing ashamed to be to ask for help like help's there when you need it like you don't shut it away like if you really need it you don't shut it away you actually talk to them when you need them the most like if you shut them away then they're, they'll turn around and go right okay you don't need the help then you know, what's the point of asking me in the future like, I've done it to loads of times loads of people before but the moment that Ben from Encompass came in from college I knew I I knew that it was time for me to not shut people away, like to actually talk to them and make them understand, like not make them understand, but help them understand what's really going on. And it's helped a lot. Um, we're very lucky we can work in a flexible way um, and we're funded by children in need. So the funding is already in place. So there's not a set amount of time we have to work with, with someone. It can be open ended. Um, and the same goes in reverse, that if the young person doesn't want to engage, there's no pressure for them to engage. Um, so I think there's, the, there's your two struggles, getting the young person to trust and open up to you. Um, but also, you know, uh, sometimes dealing with disengagement and knowing when that is because they don't need help or if they're scared to get the help. Um, I think you always deal with, with the, with the Junction Project, certainly you always deal with family issues, whatever they may be, and they're more common than, than you think. Um, and it's working in a way where you balance that, where you can talk to agencies, but also family and, 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 and stuff as well to make it sort of holistic, for want of a better word, approach for the young person. Um, so once we've accepted somebody, you know, very, very quickly, they need to get to know you and you need to get to know them because in order to give somebody the best chance here, it's like building up that working, trusting relationship very quickly. So one of the most common things that I do is offer them a cup of tea. You know, if they're a smoker, we'll go out for a cigarette together because you're then on common ground. And that's the thing in this situation because for somebody walking in the door that's homeless, it's not common ground. And you're the support worker, you're the person of authority. And actually we try and peel those barriers away. You know, in many respects, we are authority, but we won't put that in people's faces because actually it's about working together. So the, you know, the... The thing that we really try and build on from day one is that trust. They get to know us, we get to know them, and actually understanding what our limitations are and how we can help them. So reach out to the, the support networks that are there for you. I mean, in Tash's case, you have uh, college, Petroc, um, housing officers, uh, local charity support workers, and the youth service, which is now space locally here. Um, I think they're her real supportive factors. Um, but also don't neglect your, your friends and people that make you feel good, even in the toughest times. Feeling positive and feeling good is the most important thing, even if it's for small amounts of time. Um, so yeah, reach out for the support when you need it. Be as honest as you can and recognise that people are there to help. Um, I think also be positive when you can, that things will change and you know, things will get better. You're not alone. You've always got someone there, even if it's a close mate or family. They will still give you the support you need. Um, you've got all sorts out there. Like, yeah, right. You may not know people. That people may be strangers to you, but they will still help you. And when when you really need it. They will be there for you, like they're the person that builds up your confidence or helps a lot, like gets you to where you want to be in the future. And if you do get accepted the help, accept it, don't turn it down because the only thing, the only person that's going to hurt is you yourself. Like it's not going to hurt them, they'll just won't ask in future if you need the help ask for it don't push them away as if they're never one of your problems they're there to help your problems not make it worse so if you find yourself in a situation where you're threatened with homelessness the very first thing that you need to do is remember that it's not your fault and you need to find someone that you trust that might be a friend, a relative, a teacher, a college lecturer, um, an auntie, an uncle, it could be absolutely anyone, but you need to find someone you trust and you need to tell them as soon as possible 
what you're going through and then with their support look at different agencies you know the local council and find out what your options are straight away and do not be scared to speak up um that's a really difficult thing because i think there is a need sometimes to feel alone and, and afraid because that will, will send you on a path of searching for something better um and different but yeah i mean there is people out there to help um don't lose hope um, but recognise those feelings of being uh, being alone and afraid because they will, you know, they're there for a reason, um, and use them to inspire yourself to push, push better, push for things that are better. I would tell myself not to be scared, and that there is people there when you need them. Like, even if they don't answer the phone or you're not able to get hold of anyone, you've still got someone there. Even if it's a stranger, you've still got someone there to help you 